so let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, this class is our most basic class for storm sewer design and modeling. Uh, it includes everything that you're going to get when you have Stormcat. So um, I think most everybody will be using specifically Stormcat. But if you had another of our products like Civil Storm or Sewer Gems, uh, within those products, you will have the Stormcat um, features that we're going to be learning today. Um, in addition to that, you would have others, uh, which I would briefly mention here just to give you an idea of what you'd get with those, but we're not going to actually do any training on those um, more advanced features. Okay, so I mentioned some of our course structure. Uh, I will do a PowerPoint presentation so you know what we're going to do. Um, I will do, in some cases, a demonstration of the interface. Um, but most importantly, you're going to get to do hands-on workshops. And then at the end of it, we're going to review what you learned during the workshop. Uh, today we'll do the software overview so you get to see generally what it can do. Um, and we'll, what are some ways that you can look at the results. Um, so StormCAD was meant for the design and analysis of storm sewer systems, uh, particularly the design part of it, uh, because most regulations around the world uh, ask that you size your pipes and determine the invert of your uh, manholes and other structures uh, using the rational method. So you're kind of looking at the worst case scenario uh, for what your flows are going to be and based on that worst case scenario, you design. So that was the intent behind developing StormCat. Uh, and with the years, because this product has been around for like 20 years, uh, obviously improving every time, uh, with the years, we developed a tool, uh, which you will get to use tomorrow, uh, which can help you do that design. Uh, so you basically enter some criteria, like minimum pipe diameter, maximum pipe diameter, um, some slope, cover, etc. And the software can actually size all those elements for you. So it can tell you what the diameter of your pipes should be and what the invert elevation of your structures should be. Um, so it's a great tool for design, uh, but obviously it can do analysis as well. Just keep in mind that the analysis that it's doing, it's only for that peak flow uh, that is calculated using the rational method. So what kind of information does it give you? Uh, you input rainfall information in the form of IDF curves. And you input um, area. So you, you draw actually these catchments. And you specify what kind of um, soil it is. You know, So basically, that C coefficient in our equations. We're going to see it in a little bit. Um, but you let us know what kind of surface it is. So is it? permeable or impermeable. Uh, and given that information and the size of your catchment, uh, the software can calculate the runoff that would be generated from that surface. So that's uh, one of the outputs. Um, and because it knows that uh, catchment runoff, which is a flow, uh, it can tell you how much of that flow goes into your uh, system, whether it's uh, surface, like um, the thing kind of flows that goes on a gutter, uh, or if it goes into your drainage system through inlets, it can tell you, okay, of all that flow, this much can go into the inlet, and the rest will continue to flow down the gutter. Uh, and what goes into the inlet becomes your inflows into your catch basins, and ultimately into your pipes. Uh, and then it can calculate all the hydraulics uh, for your pipes and your outfall. So it tells you what the depth of flow is at any point, uh, velocity, and things like that. Uh, it's, it has a very intuitive and easy interface, uh, which you're going to learn a little bit. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, what you can do here, you can also do in Civil Storm and Sewer Gems. Um, 
The solver in StormCAD is what we called gradually varied flow, so GVF, rational. Um, and this is important because if you're using um, products like Civil Storm or Sewer Gems, you're going to have two, three, or four solvers available to you. So the solver that is for StormCAD is called GVF Rational. Uh, here you can see the list of all the other solvers available in Civil Storm and Sewer Gems. Okay, so in particular, the GVF Rational Solver, um, it handles rational method storms, um, so the likes of IDF, you know. Uh, it can perform HEC 22 inlet calculations, so we're going to talk about um, some of those losses that happen at your um, structures. Those are calculated using HEC 22 methodology. And it can design and analyze things like inlets, pipes, uh, open channels, as long as they're prismatic, because as we're going to go through our foundation of the theory behind the software, we'll know that that's important. Uh, it can also calculate culverts. So it can do both the hydrology and the hydraulics. And um, since you guys are doing a lot of drainage design, um, you'll be happy to see that the software can calculate uh, the spread and depth uh, of flow um, near an inlet. So I mentioned that it does uh, peak flows only, so we're not looking at simulations over time, we're simply taking a picture of the worst case scenario, which is your rational peak flow. Uh, so it calculates it from your catchments and then it routes it in the system. Uh, we had that question about does it work only in standalone? So during the class, class we will be working in the standalone interface. Um, when you buy StormCat, the simplest of all licenses uh, which is our standalone, it automatically comes with the possibility of working inside of MicroStation, so that's that integration is free. Uh, but if you actually are a company that uses AutoCAD, you can pay a little bit more and um, for that license, and then you, as you can see in this picture, you're running inside of AutoCAD, um, but you have, uh, here's an, an in the picture, it's, it's a little hard to see, but this one is particular for sewer gems. So you see a tab here. That's the sewer gems. In your case, it'd be StormCat. Uh, and then it gives you all the, the same elements that you would have in the standalone, such as element symbology. You double click on it in any given element on a pipe, uh, and you see the properties, uh, all from inside AutoCAD. <coughs> Um, okay, so here's a little bit of a, a look at our data structure. So when you work in the standalone, you have an STSW file and an STSW SQLite. Now the SQLite is the actual database where all, all the information is stored, so pipe diameter, length, um, hydraulic properties like flow velocity, all that is stored in the SQLite. Uh, when you move into other platforms like AutoCAD uh, or MicroStation, in addition to uh, these files that you see here, TWH, STSW, STS2Lite, uh, SQLite, you get their native um, live um, uh, platform format. Um, as a way of uh, integrating our products with other Bentley civil products. Uh, we've included this functionality of StormCAD. So if you buy or if you own a license of open roads, uh, you're going to see uh, a tab that says subsurface utilities and that includes a 100 inlet StormCAD license. Uh, so if you already have open roads, you wouldn't need to buy StormCAD. Uh, if you need a larger license, so more inlets, or you want to use other pro uh, products like Civil Storm or Sewer Gems, you would have to um, buy those in addition. But 
included with open roads is the 100 inlet storm cat. Um, if you're using inroads, storm and sanitary, you can import and export to and from storm cat and inroads. Uh, same thing with geopack drainage. We can import and export files to communicate with the two products. Um, but if you use AutoCAD Civil 3D, uh, it's not a direct export or import to StormCAD. You'd have to export as a land XML file and then you import a land XML uh, from StormCAD. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the features. Uh, when you open the software, you're going to see uh, some network elements on the top. It's a tab called Layout. Uh, and these are all the elements that you can draw and do analysis on in StormCAD. So we have catch basins, manholes, outfalls, headwalls, cross sections, uh, and those are what we call the nodes. And then for links, you have pipes, gravity pipes, which are conduits. Uh, or you can have open channels or gutters. Uh, gutters simply connect one inlet to the other, other um, downstream inlet. Um, recently, and it's not shown in this picture, uh, we added other element types, which are meant for um, modeling individual property connections. So you'll see them in the software, they look like a little house. So that identifies an individual user. And once you have that little house, which is called a property connection, you can connect to the rest of your system using a lateral and also a tap. So it goes property connection to lateral to tap and the tap itself connects to the pipes in your system. Now, in terms of licenses, because when you buy StormCAD, you buy it by the number of inlets, um, those tabs do not increase the number of your pipes. So if you wanted to use them just to get more detail, you can do that without increasing the number of pipes in your, in your model. And uh, once you start working with the software, uh, you realize that we've added a lot of tools to help you make this process uh, fast and, you know, easy uh, as an engineer. Now, some of those tools, we're going to learn them during our workshops, our model builder for building your models, uh, network navigator for finding possible problems like things that didn't get connected or are isolated or different slopes and things like that. T-Rex to bring terrain elevation. Um, we're going to see them a little bit more as we go along. So I'm going to move ahead. All right, so in particular, when you have to create a model for the first time, um, what we've done and we've, you know, 20 years ago, it was just like manually you would input each catch basin, each pipe, and it would be time consuming. But nowadays, all this information already exists in digital format. So either it's in an AutoCAD file or in a shape file or geodatabase, it's already in a digital format. So what we've done is we've created tools for you to reuse that data. So the most important is called uh, Model Builder, which allows you to bring data from uh, CAD drawings, geospatial data, uh, or even Excel, or databases and spreadsheets, and turn that into your model. Um, and we have another tool. Uh, in fact, actually, there's two separate tools now, one called T-Rex and one called Terrain Models, that lets you basically overlap the model that you're drawing on top of a terrain model, and that way we can know what the ground elevation is for each of your nodes. And we can actually show that in the profiles, which is very neat. So this terrain model um, dynamically links your elements to the uh, terrain model file so that if you move um, a catch basin, for example, it would update automatically the ground elevation for that node because it knows where you moved it to 
in the terrain model file. Um, it is also used for displaying the profile between structures. So in the past, uh, it was always a straight line between a catch basin and another, but now because we know the terrain profile, we can show it on our profiles. Um, this is also used actually when you have the software do the design for you and you want it to look at maintaining cover along um, a pipe. So you can say, okay, look at the cover, but not just at the structure points, you know, so at my catch basins, but also look in between to make sure that there isn't like a dip on the road or something and I get left with very little bits of cover. So it's a, it's a very dynamic and wonderful tool to have. Now, once you bring all that data from whatever source, CAD, GIS, or shape um, or databases, you can clean up because there's always a little bit of cleanup. It's never perfect, the data as you import it. So we have this tool called Network Navigator and it can help you problems like what you see listed there, duplicate elements, orphaned elements, uh, links that are missing, notes, etc. So it's a great tool and we're going to learn to use it uh, in, our, in our workshop as well. Uh, we have something that is unique to our product and it's called scenario management. And we get you to work with this during our workshops so you become familiar with this because it really is great when you're doing design. Um, and what do I mean? In the past, before we had this, you would do your original design. So you had one file, one model, and let's say you, you designed it with certain slopes. And you run it and you were not really satisfied with the results. Now you would want to modify something. And when you make that modification, you would lose your original design, right? So what people would end up with is five or six models uh, that were slightly different from one another, but then making the comparison between one and the other was challenging. You probably didn't remember what exactly changed or it's hard to see the impact. Um, so to avoid that, we made a system where in one file you can have several different scenarios. We like to call them what if scenarios. So you have your base design and you say, ooh, what if I switch, um, you know, what if I change the material? What if I change the diameter of the pipe? What if I change the inlet uh, type or what if I change, you name it. So you can have in one file all these possibilities as a scenarios. And the nice thing about it is that you can make comparisons between them. So you can say, okay, compare my scenario with six inch diameter uh, pipes and 12 inch diameter pipes or something. Um, and then it says, okay, look, the flows would be different. The depths would be different. The velocities would be different. So you can see all those comparisons, which makes it really great. Um, but the important thing to get good at creating and using scenarios is understanding the difference in terminology between scenario and alternative. Okay, so right now this might sound a little foreign to you, but you know, the more you use it, the more you will realize the value of having this, this option of scenarios and alternatives. Um, now scenarios, it's really like a folder where you keep all your data. Uh, so if you look at the screen, you see the scenarios look like a little yellow folder. Uh, and what's stored in each folder? It's alternatives. So the data itself is never stored in a scenario. The data is always stored in the alternatives. Uh, in fact, if you think of it, um, in your database, what you're really creating every time is a set of data in an alternative. And why don't we just have like one big alternative alternative and not be bothered with it? Well, because we have, we want to be able to do those comparisons. Uh, so each alternative, and I would recommend that you spend some time doing this, go into the alternatives of any model and look at what kind of data is stored in each one of your alternatives. 
Um, most of the time, the titles are self-explanatory, so um, a physical alternative would include physical data, for example, pipe diameter, pipe material, pipe length, things of that sort. Uh, the rainfall runoff alternative contains the rainfall data, so all your storms, you know, your five-year storm, your 10-year storms, your 100-year storm, all that would be stored in there. Uh, your design alternative con contains your design constraints uh, and things like that. But sometimes it isn't as obvious. So in order to take full advantage of it, uh, the first step is understanding what data is stored in what alternative. Uh, once you do that, then you create multiple multiple alternatives. So you say, oh, okay, okay, I want to run, I want to see how my system behaves when uh, there's a 10-year rainfall. Ooh, but I also want to see what it looks like when there's a 100-year rainfall. So you create those two different rainfall alternatives, and then you associate each of those with its own scenario. You run the two scenarios, so you don't run alternatives, you always run scenarios, and then you get, you get to compare. Oh, I want to see um, what happened, you know, what was the flow at my outfall, for example, uh, of one versus the other. So that's that's how it works. And don't worry if this becomes if it, this isn't completely coming naturally to you until you work with it. It's is when it all starts making sense, right? Um, okay, so here we have some examples. Here's your base scenario. Your base scenario contains um, for physical alternative, one called base, for rainfall runoff, a two-year storm, and for active topology, current. That's what we've named them. Um, active topology, it's, it's basically you can have uh, in your file some elements that get included in some scenarios, but they don't get included in others. Uh, so a typical example would be uh, you're analyzing a system as is right now, and then you want to say what happens in 30 years when a new development comes up. So you want to have the ability to model the system as it is today, but it also as it is in the future. So all those future elements you would put in a separate active topology alternative so that you can decide in which runs those are going to be included or not. Um, so let's say that was your base scenario. Now you create another scenario, which you're going to call 100-year storm. Uh, basically the same physical properties. Only difference is that now you're basically putting your model through a 100-year storm versus the two-year storm. So that's the only thing that has changed. Now look back at our color coding. We have it um, set here by flows probably, so you can see that they have changed. Now you can say, okay, uh, those pipes were insufficient for such high flows, so I'm going to create a rehabilitation, which means everything uh, started with 12 inch diameters, now I'm going to turn it into 30 inch, 24, 18, 15 um, inch pipe diameter. So in the same file, you were able to model it uh, in three different ways. Now, now that with the bigger diameters, you run it under a 100-year storm, and it seems to have plenty of capacity for that. Um, and now you can say, OK, what happens if, in addition to that, I have, you see this red area over here? What happens if I have new users there, maybe? A commercial building or something, well, you're going to have to add uh, a series of catch basins and pipes, and that increases your flow. And obviously, you might have, uh, as in this case, run into some capacity issues with those extra flows. So it gives you that ability of switching literally from one scenario to the next and see the results change on your screen. Uh, or you can actually compare them in a tabular form. Uh, so either way, the software can show you the differences in the model. 
Okay, and I said that uh, Stormcat has kind of been the go-to tool for designing um, storm sewers, and because of that, uh, and we know we knew that everybody was designing with it, we made this process even easier by saying, you know, just give me your design constraints and you know narrow down the possibilities of you know pipe diameters to something reasonable. Tell me what materials you like. Um, and I'll try out all the different possibilities and come up with the best design. Um, so in this case, you input constraints for your gravity pipes, uh, which basically it's minimum and maximum velocity, minimum and maximum cover, minimum and maximum slope. Um, and then you can also say things like, okay, I don't want you to design my pipes to be 100% full because you know in the future you know flows might increase or something so do a partial um, partially full design so only design them for like 80% full just giving that extra 20% um, of room for capacity in the future uh, you can also put parallel pipes and things like that uh, and for your notes you basically say how you want to connect your uh, incoming pipes to a catch basin or manhole um, and how that also uh, matches with the outgoing pipes. So are they all just connected at the bottom or can there be a drop structure and at that structure uh, or do you want to force an offset of sorts? So that's the kind of things that you do. Uh, and for your inlets actually you get to say okay this is the I, I can only uh, put on three different kind of inlets and here they are. So I want you to use this one, two or three possibilities, but I want you to size them. So maybe you know it's a great inlet, but Stormcat has the option of designing it to be one foot, two foot, three foot or however long it needs to be so that it can capture all the flow that comes to it. Okay, and for um, entering your storm data, um, it is uh, rational storm data. So you can see here in this graph some IDF curves for a 10 year in blue and 100 year uh, in red. If you don't have it in a tabular form, you can also use some of the equations that we have built into the software. Um, you can use Hydro 35 storms and you can also set global events or local storm events. So if your um, development was so large that maybe half of it was on one side of a drainage divide where it's really dry and then the other was on a on the other side of the drainage divide where it rains a lot, you can say okay for this part use uh, this kind of IDF curve and uh, for the other part use a different kind. Okay, and to make things even easier, uh, we have what is called the engineering libraries. And the idea here is that you're not entering the same data over and over and over again for all the projects. So if you guys, for example, in Denver, um, you use the same IDF curves, there is no need to input them, you know, that table for every single project. Um, you enter it once, you put it in a library, and then you reuse it and then you share it with all your colleagues so they're not having to redo your work. Um, so you can do libraries not just on storm data, but you can put the catalogs of your pipes and you know whatever you happen to use in your area, inlet catalogs, um, material libraries, etc. Here's all the, the list of types of engineering libraries. And um, okay, so you came up, maybe you did a preliminary design, you refined it, you're happy with it, you like it. Um, how do you actually get to see the results? We'll give you a variety of ways, but most of the time when you're dealing with um, storm sewer systems, you look at profiles. Uh, and here are different ways that you can take a look at a profile. Uh, in this one here, you can see a green line that green line represents your ground uh, elevation. 
the white looks at your structures in this case and then at the bottom obviously it's the pipe and then you see the blue which is obviously your water <laughs> and then you can see a blue line here that represents the hydraulic rate line so when you're doing um, an analysis of a pipe that is not surcharged your water surface is going to be the same as your hydraulic grade line um, but if you're working under pressurized situations uh, then your hydraulic grade line is going to be drawn above the physical pipe um, itself and then the red line represents uh, the energy grade line um, so that's our, what we call the standard profiles um, you can see a similar one which is what we call the engineering profile and this is more for like plotting your results and you can modify everything as to how you want to label all the things uh, this can be saved as a uh, DXF so you can put it directly in your plotting um, files that you have already in AutoCAD or something like that and you can also create tabular reports like this If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.